You've got uh, kind of like the animal brain, reptile brain. Hey everyone, today we're diving into one of the most mind-bending conversations of the decade. If, if, you, if you want to be along for the ride. Joe Rogan and Elon Musk discussing AI, human intelligence, and where we're heading as a species. And more like ha having AI be vastly, you know, beyond us and... Some of it is fascinating, some of it is terrifying, and some of it... Uh, then you need to do some kind of symbiosis. So, well, we'll make you wonder if we're all turning into glorified robots. So buckle up as we break this conversation down, and trust me, it only gets wilder. The Cortex. It'd be much smarter than the Cortex. Right off the bat, Elon talks about how we shouldn't be worried about competing with other humans. Yeah, like, we should be, I think, less concerned about, like, re relative you know, capabilities between people and... But instead, we should be thinking about AI becoming vastly superior to all of us. And more, like, ha having AI be vastly, you know, beyond us and... I mean, it's like training for a marathon only to find out you're racing against a jet plane. Decoupled from human will. So this is the, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. If you can't beat them, join them. So you feel like it's inevitable, like AI, sentient AI. Super sentient AI, yeah. I love how casually Elon says this, like, no big deal. Like beyond a level that's difficult to understand. And Impossible to understand, probably. We yeah. just have to fuse our brains with machines to stay relevant. And somehow or another, us, you, you, so it's almost like a requirement for, for survival. Totally normal Wednesday, to right? S achieve some sort of symbiotic existence with AI. So Elon's saying it's not like we have to join forces with AI, but if we don't, well, AI could leave us in the dust. And it's just, if you want to be along for the ride, then you need to do some kind of symbiosis. So it's kind of like watching the train leave the station and you're not even on board yet. Sentient AI is essentially inevitable. Super sentient AI, yeah. Now, this next part gets deep. Like beyond a level that's difficult to understand. And Maybe impossible to understand, probably. Elon hints that AI could evolve into a form of super intelligence beyond our comprehension. And in somehow or another, us, you, you, so it's almost like a requirement for, for survival. This isn't some sci-fi movie. He's talking about reality in the near future. And for some of us, that reality is pretty unsettling. It's not a requirement, it's just smart brain, or the, the, the brain that's capable of planning and understanding concepts and different difficult you know, things that a monkey can't understand. So is it really a requirement for survival? But the way your brain works right now, you've got the primitive brain and you've got the... Or are we rushing headfirst into something we don't fully understand? Like that could be symbiotic with the cortex. It would be much smarter than the cortex. Elon kind of leaves that question hanging in the air, but it's one we should all be thinking about. The, like the, the computer, the AI, is, a, is like a, a third layer, a tertiary layer. He's saying we already have two brains fighting for control. Now we need a third one to help us out. And, and you actually have that right now. Your phone is capable of things and your computer is capable of things that your brain is definitely not. At some point, it feels like we'll need a project manager in our heads just to keep track of all these layers. You know, storing you know, terabytes of information perfectly. Right. We've all seen it. Our brains can barely remember where we left our keys, but our phones... Doing incredible calculations that... They store every embarrassing text we've ever sent. You know, we, we couldn't even come close to doing. You have that with your computer. So yeah, we're kind of already there. Um, it's just like I said, the data rate is slow. You, the connection is weak. Now this is where Elon gets into his famous analogy about the brain's layers. You've got uh, kind of like the animal brain, reptile brain. The reptilian brain, the cortex, and the potential for a third layer. The brain that's capable of planning and understanding concepts and difficult things that a monkey can't understand. Which would be AI. It's like humans are already running on two CPUs and now Elon's telling us to get ready for the ultimate upgrade. The, like the, the computer, the AI is, a, is like a, a third layer, a tertiary layer. Okay, so in the future our brain is going to have three layers. Reptile, human, and AI. So it'd be much smarter than the cortex, but you'd essentially have three layers. It's like a brain sandwich. And the AI part, that's the gourmet layer, doing all the heavy lifting while the rest of your brain is just flipping burgers. And, and then it's like, okay, so we can improve the functionality and, and improve the communications, communication speed, so... No more texting with thumbs. Then you will not have to use your thumbs to communicate with the computer. It's like Elon's vision of the future is all about skipping the awkward, clumsy steps we humans take. Imagine replying to emails just by thinking about it. That's either really cool or really dangerous. You already are yeah. symbiotic with AI or computers. Phones. It's interesting. Elon's argument is that we're already half machine. We just don't notice it yet. Why is it so disconcerting? Why does it not give me comfort? 
but where does it stop? Like when I think about a symbiotic connection to AI, I always think of this cold. When does enhancing ourselves become losing what makes us human? Emotionless thing that we will become. Then there's this eerie but fascinating concept. Is that a bad way to look at it? I don't think that's not, that's not quite, that's not how it would be. What happens to your online presence after you die? And now online, it's like somebody dies, there's just like an online ghost. Elon refers to it as a sort of online ghost. That they're, they're still, they're online still. Stuff is yeah. still alive. Ever seen someone's Twitter still alive long after they're gone? That's a good way to put it. It is um, weird when you read someone's tweets after they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Creepy, right? Instagram and their stories and stuff. Yeah. It's funny how we think of AI as this futuristic thing, but we're already halfway there. Whatever Facebook and so you know, like the That's like a the, great the way to put it. It's like an online ghost. That's very accurate. Yeah. The question is. Do we really want more of ourselves to live in the cloud? Increasingly, neural nets are sort of taking over from regular programming more, more and more. Will this enhance our lives or take something very human away from us? It would just be that, that more of you would be in the cloud, I guess, than in your body. That's a strange thought, isn't it? Even when we're gone, our digital selves could live on. It makes you wonder, are we creating our legacy or just building a digital replica that'll outlive the real us? Here's where things get intense. When do you think you're going to do it? Um, Elon's talking about fixing brain injuries with neural implants, but Joe asks the question, How long will you wait? Like, once it starts becoming available. Yeah, if it works, I'll do it, sure. And Elon's answer is, Right away. I mean, let's make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been thinking, who's going to be the guinea pig for this? Like, what do you do? No, no, you take you, rapists. <laughs> well, let's just say it raises a few ethical eyebrows. How do we make sure it works? We try it on prisoners? No. Cut holes in the head? So, no, they're not going to start experimenting on prisoners, which is good. Now, like I said, if somebody's got a serious brain injury. Right. But let's hope they're not rushing to implant this into people's brains without fully understanding the long-term risks. And they're, they're, you know, people have like very severe brain injuries. Um, I mean, I'm all for fixing brain injuries, but I'm not signing up for the first edition of Brain OS, you know? And, and, and then you, you can fix those, those brain injuries. You prove out that it works and you expand, your envelope expand. And so it's not just for brain injuries. Um, and then you know, at, certain, at certain age, we, we all are, are going to get Alzheimer's. We're all going to get senile. Elon's saying that as we age, Neuralink could be the key to keeping our minds sharp. You know, moms forget the names of their kids and that kind of thing. And so, OK, well, you know, this would allow you to remember your names of your kids and, and have a much more normal life. Where it sounds incredible. No more forgetting names, no more memory loss as you age. You, you're able to function uh, much later in life. Almost everyone would find a need at some point using a neural link. But again, we have to ask, what's the long-term cost of integrating technology so deeply into our lives? What are we going to be? Like when? 20, 25 years from now, what are we going to be? Elon ends on a wild note predicting that in 25 years, we could have a full brain AI interface. In 25 years, probably something, yeah, I would think like, there could be a whole brain interface. Imagine that. Every neuron in your brain connected to some advanced AI, extending your abilities far beyond what you can do today. And, and then it's like, okay, so we can improve the functionality and, and improve the communications, communication speed, so. But as with all revolutionary technologies, there's a catch. You ever did, like sit down and think about all the different iterations of this and what this eventually leads to? What kind of world are we heading into when our thoughts are directly connected to machines? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm sure I think about it a lot. And will we even be the same humans we are today? It's looking fragile right now. Well, assuming civilization is still around. So what do you guys think? Is this the next step in human evolution? AI extension of yourself. AI extension of yourself. Yeah. Or are we opening Pandora's box by merging our minds with AI? What does that mean to you? Like when you, when you say AI extension of yourself? Well, you like I said, you already have a computer extension of yourself in mm -hmm. your phone, and now online, it's like somebody dies. There's just like an online ghost. Not something that's gonna sneak up on you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more thought-provoking breakdowns. Catch you in the next video.